world, we're still keeping you in prayer. So if you have any prayer requests, we'll kindly request you to uh, share to Impact Zambia. It's part of our co-host. As you logged in, you can be able to see them. And uh, gladly, we'll be able to keep you in prayer and um, have you uh, comforted by the Holy Spirit. We're glad also to see teams uh, joining us from Algeria. If I'm pronouncing it well, it's Ntini from Algeria. We're glad to have you on board. We can see all corners of the world uh, being represented here. It is a great moment and a blessing to have you all on board. So at uh, this moment, I would like to once again uh, thank for those who managed to be with us for the last 24 days, this being the 24th day of this program. And uh, in um, around 20 minutes, we shall be having our speaker speak to us. So at this moment, uh, I will allow our host to uh, pass some information in regards to the mission environment. And uh, I see shares to uh, share with us uh, that information regarding the mission environment. Uh, allow me also uh, thank the various speakers. Let's keep praying for them, for the wonderful work they've done, and the messages that we've received for the last 24 days to be of a great pressing unto us, and above all, to bear fruits in our lives. That post-COVID-19 will say indeed, uh, many souls were won for the kingdom of God. Uh, thank you so much as I welcome uh, our host to uh, pass the information regarding the Mission Empowerment uh, Conference. Uh, thank you. Uh, sorry for the technical hitch, he is uh, trying to check on the sound. Why 
hasn't Jesus come yet? Could it be that we feel inadequate to reach out because we think we're spiritual novices? Could it be because we need to pray even the more for the outpouring of the latter rain? Could it be that we haven't found the specific key to the specific lock? Or could it be that we have no theme that offers the people a solution, hence the need for godly and mature leadership? Could it be exhilarating for you to meet thousands of passionate and enthusiastic young missionaries from all over the globe? Would it be amazing to interact with different nationals and learn of them? Absolutely. 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 Young people from all over the world come together looking for something profound, radical, and significant. A purpose, a direction, a vision, and a challenge. We come to train on Christ's method of reaching out to everyone, everywhere. We come to pray earnestly for the latter rain and study the Bible like never before. We come to fellowship and be mentored. We are Mission Empowerment Conference. Join us in Lusaka for the MEC 28. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that uh, uh, promo. It's clear that indeed the harvest is right. We have great, great and immense work before us to carry. There are people you're able to reach that I, Moses, I'm not able to reach. And that is a class of people that I can e easily reach without um, much strength as you can do in your sphere of influence. Thank you for that. And um, we would like also to give a special welcome to our non-Adventist friends uh, who've joined us either for the first time or faithfully been with us for the last 24 days. We're glad to have you on board. And it's amazing to uh, see you uh, worship with us and learn with us. And if there is any question or clarification you'd like to make, kindly get in touch with the, uh, the Impact Zambia host line. And it's clearly ind indicated in uh, the particip participants uh, uh, list. And you can be able to be directed and uh, even uh, given much more resources to research and help you in this journey that we are having here on Earth. At this moment also, we very, very happy to have uh, the various leaders across the continent to uh, be with us in this session as we pray unto our Lord to continue shedding much more light in light of the times we're living, and especially as we near Christ's second advent. Uh, friends, it is a moment that we need to be on our knees and build our foundations on the rock, who is uh, Jesus Christ, as the speakers have been sharing from day and today. So that we can keep time and able to finish within our schedule, uh, we'll go into a um, song session. And in this song session, we'll take around uh, five to 10 minutes before we welcome our speaker for the day, Brother Mensa. So um, allow me to welcome our uh, singers as they sing with us. And may we all uh, tune in and uh, get the messages that they're bringing in. Remember, music is a, a part of worship. It's a prayer itself. As we prepare our hearts to receive the message, may we prayerfully listen to the music that is being presented before us. Uh, thank you as a player comes in with the messages for today through music. Welcome.
Amen, amen.
We finished with praising the name of our Lord. Remember our theme uh, for tonight's uh, study and uh, message that we shall be presented before us with uh, our brother Mensa is on faith and an, a faith that uh, is able to withstand, especially in these times that we're living in, uh, even uh, when death comes before us. I can see a number of questions from uh, far and wide. On now we can join Imbak Zambia. I know Imbak Zambia has sister movements across the continent. In South Africa, we have mission cohorts. In Kenya, we have RF Kenya. So friends, as you get to inquire, you're free to get the various leadership across the countries that you are so that you can be able to reach the team that is near you. It's also good to uh, say before us that uh, as we enter into today's message and uh, before I pray, Alive Kenya has a weekly uh, series at, at 4 p.m. East African time. Um, this coming weekend, we shall be having furnace of affliction and uh, the presenters here, uh, Sister Thando and Brother Jackson Sire, and uh, our own chaplain, Pastor David Odiambo, will be gracing the occasion. You're very much welcome. So, because it is time for us to enter into the message of the hour, allow me to pray and I welcome our pastor and friend, Pastor Mensa, to share with us the message of the day. Let's bow down as we pray. We pray. A living God, we come before you. We thank you, Father, for indeed it is by your might and power that we've moved from session to session, day unto day, speaker unto speaker, from one message to another, Father. Tonight we come before you again with full assurance, Father, as you've been with us and you've spoken through the speakers that you've given them your messages, Father, as they've touched us. May we, Father, be able to respond. May the messages land on good soil and grow further into good fruits. At this hour, Father, as your servant, Brother Mensa comes on board to present the message that you've presented down to him, Father. May you empower him with your spirit. May there be 
a quickening of our hearts, Father. At this hour also, we remember those facing various challenges of internet connectivity. May you come through for them, Father. Those watching us from various platforms, Impact Zambia Facebook page, and the Live Kenya page, Father, may you be with them, Father. May there be no distractions, Father. And Father, may their hearts, soul, desires, and questions, Father, be quenched by your living spirit. We pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. Uh, welcome, uh, Pastor and friend, Mensa, to share with us uh, the message. Welcome, Pastor. Hello, you on mute, uh, Pastor. Uh, all right. I hope I'm able to share my screen. Correct. Proceed. All right. Good evening to us all. Good it's evening. It's a pleasure to join you uh, from Accra, Ghana, and uh, it's been exactly about four years ago when I got to know a couple of you uh, for your Mission Empowerment Conference. And it's such a privilege to join you again this year, 2020. Of Impact Zambia for the opportunity to share the word of God. And uh, we trust God that it will be fruitful to us according to the time of life. Let's kindly bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, in the next few minutes, we will be listening to you to speak to us. Make me a vessel because we have asked in church. Amen. As I always do, it was Jesus himself who said, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You can say a hearty amen out there. I want to make to you four promises. Promise number one is the Bible is going to be the bedrock of our study. And the reason is the Bible means what it says and says just what it means. Promise number two is you are going to be enlightened irrespective of who you are. Promise number three, you are going to be challenged to make the most important decision of your life. And promise number four, your life and mine will never be the same. Our subject for today, faithful to the end, retaining identity in the time of the end. Faithful to the end retaining identity in the time of the end. It's, it's a mouthful of a caption, but it's very loaded and it has a thing here today. I do not want to go into too much semantics and do uh, too much uh, uh, homiletics or exegesis. I want to drive straight to the concept and for us to pick practical biblical steps and then we will churn out lessons that can impact our lives. So here we go this way. If you read the Bible very carefully, you will see about some versions will tell you 300 and something times faithful and faithfulness has been used. For example, you read the book of Hebrews chapter 3. In fact, specifically verse 14, it says, for if we are faithful to the end, Trusting God, just as firmly as when we first believe, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. The emphasis is faithful to the end. You go to the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13. But the one who stands firm from the Greek perspective is equivalent to the one who is faithful to the end, will be saved. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, 
be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. So permit me to say, when the Bible talks about faithfulness, it's referring to honesty, trusting. It means fidelity. It means resoluteness. It means being true to that which one is committed to, faithful. Your theme or the topic for tonight suggests some few things I would like us to take a serious look at. The topic tonight is saying, faithful to the end, faithful to the end. Then it says, retaining identity in the time of the end. In other words, the topic is calling for not a part-time faithfulness, not a half-time faithfulness. The topic is calling for a full-time surrender, a full-time commitment a full time of oneself being given to the Lord to be used completely, to be used comprehensively. It means it is a call against superficial faith. It's a call against a faith that is a wannabe. It's a call against a faith that is not rooted, a faith that is not ready to go the full haul, faithful to the end. Then the sub team, uh, retaining identity in the time of the end. I want to challenge a little bit of the topic. Your topic is assuming that there is an identity. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I want to make the case very clear. As a people, as a church, as a world, as a continent, we are suffering from identity crisis. Every one of us, from leaders to nations to continent, there is an identity crisis. In fact, the state of the world in the midst of COVID-19 is, is, is a great testament to the fact that there is an identity crisis. I'll be dealing with that a, a, a little more. Uh, uh, th th there is also the concept not to not to go too deep into it it's basically just the period before the return of jesus so being true being honest being resolute being real to what one is committed to and retaining who one is before the end of the world so to speak that is the topic so i want to go into an that presents a very detailed, in, from where I stand, insight into the theme we are dealing with this evening. Faithful unto the end, retaining identity in the time of the end. It's a story about Naboth. It's a story that, that, that drives home the deeper intricacies of what faithfulness is. It's a story that drives home the point of what fidelity is, is a story that drives the point of what loyalty is. Our subject for tonight, faithful to the end, retaining identity in the time of the end. Let's take our Bibles and let's get to the book of 1 Kings chapter 21 from verse one to verse 16. I'm going to read it out. Then we'll begin to dive into the subject for today. The Bible says, and it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of King Ahab in Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. Verse three, but Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his, ha his house, Sulen, 
minister and displeased because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, has spoken to him. For he has said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. Verse 5. But Jezebel, his wife, and said to him, why is your spirit so sullen, so sad that you eat no food? Verse 6. He said to her, because I spoke to Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said to him, give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it please you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Verse 7. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, you now exercise authority over Israel, exclamation sign. Arise, eat, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Verse 8. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in the letter saying, proclaim a fast and set Naboth with high honor among the people. And let two men, scouters, dishonest person, so to speak, before him to bear witness against him, saying, as God and the king, then take him out and stone him that he may die. Verse 11, so the men of his city, the elders and the nobles who were inhabitants of a city did as Jezebel had sent to them, as it was written in the letters which had, which had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated neighbors with high honor among the people and two men, squadrons, came in and sat before him and the squadrons witness against him saying, Naboth in the blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones so that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And it came to pass. When Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. Verse 17. So it was when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. This is the word of the Lord. Somebody say an amen wherever you are. Faithful to the end, retaining identity in the time of the end. So here is the story. We've seen the plot. It's important to give some background story or background insight. You see, Israel experienced widespread apostasy during the reign of Ahab. Ahab was the seventh king of Israel. He reigned from 876 to 854 BC. That is a period of 22 years. Ahab's compromised marriage. You know, Ahab got married to Jezebel, so to speak. So the daughter of Edbal, king of the Zidonian, it resulted in a certain political stability for the children of Israel, though there was a great and a threatening apostasy. So whilst Ahab was married to Jezebel and was the king of Samaria or Israel, at this time there was a divided nation, two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, and the 10 tribes that had fallen to uh, with, with its capital in Samaria. And Ahab was the king in Samaria, he was the king of Israel, not Judah. So at this stage, whilst Ahab was the king, the Bible says something spectacular happened. You will notice that in the Bible, King Ahab, he has a palace 
In fact, when you read 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 39, his palace was a palace of ivory. He owns one in Samaria and owns another in Jezreel. So the king was rich. Ahab was not poor. He had resources. He got the money. He was the, 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 the commander in chief of, of, of the children of Israel. Every expense the king desired, he is privileged to have. So the Bible says, at the stage, King Ahab, though rich, was unsatisfied. Just like many rich men we have today, they want more. They desire more. And all we need is more. Riches is not bad. But King Ahab, his desire to get more of what he already has, has almost become like he was someone who was covetous, so to speak. Let me get back to the text. First Kings chapter 21, from verse 1 to verse 2. The Bible says, and it came to pass after these things pass. For us to understand the, the, the Bible passage carefully, we need to know after what things. The Bible says, it came to pass after these things that neighbor of the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of King Ahab. So after which things to understand the, pre, the, the event that occurred before 1 Kings chapter 21, we need to, for the sake of time, just go to 1 Kings chapter 20. What were the things that occurred? What things happened? Number one, Ahab was def or, or Ahab defeat the Syrians. You read 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to verse 22. He defeated the Syrians. Ahab defeated, if you so permit, the, the, the Syrians. Then Ahab's treaty with Ben Adam was full. You read the story quite carefully, verse 31 to verse 34 or so. Then in verse 35, Ahab was condemned through an acted prophecy. So the Lord condemned him that because you joined alliance with Ben Hadad, your life will go for his life. So this is the background. Ahab defeats the Syrians. The Syrians were defeated the second time. Ben Hadab sent a treaty to Ahab to form an alliance. Then God sent a prophet to Ahab. You are condemned. You did not do well. King Ahab, you are ashamed. You cannot continue this way. Then it was at this background that first Kings chapter 21. And it came to pass after this thing. It came to pass after Ahab defeated the Syrians. It came to pass after Ahab or the Syrians were defeated a second time. It came to pass after Ahab's treaty with ben -Hadab. In fact, it came to pass. Or oh, after these things, after Ahab was condemned, then the narrative continued that there was a man in Jezreel. He had a vineyard, and the vineyard was close to the palace of the king of Ahab. It is instructive to know, ladies and gentlemen, that Jezreel was in the plain of Esdralion to the north of Mount Gilboa. It was the brow of a steep rocky descent sloping down towards the north and the east. If you see the topography very carefully and you want to understand why Jezreel is what it is we are discussing today, this is the topography. Jezreel, if you permit, was the brow of the steep. In fact, it was very rocky. If, if, if you check the way it was, since the ancient vineyard seems to have been the east of the city, Ahab's palace was probably on the side. In fact, I'm, I'm referring to 1 Kings chapter 18. So when you are in Ahab's palace, so to speak, you can view all the way towards Jordan. That was a presidential palace. And the Bible says, it was at this time that King Ahab, when he had his palace, he had his vineyard, close to one of a Jezreelite, there was a discussion. So here is a pictorial, 
uh, uh, thought to this. Mm -hmm. was close to the presidential edifice. I want to believe neighbor felt this was good enough to make some, 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 some good strategic location. So the president might have been seeing neighbor's edifice or neighbor's uh, garden, so to speak. So the Bible says, Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden. Before it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. Take note of some key things. So the president might have sent some people to call this citizen. The citizen came, a, 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 a man from Jezreel. I want your vineyard. Look at some critical things. The king made some requests. Number one, give me your vineyard. Request number one. Then the king said, granted it to be a problem to have the vineyard. Let me give a reason why I need the vineyard. I want to use it for vegetable garden. Maybe Kinheba is, is an agriculturist. Then, watch very carefully. He gave further reason. I don't just want it for agricultural garden because it is near nest to my house. He may, I, 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 in my sanctified mind, because of national security, Mr. Mr. Naboth, it, it, it can be quite detrimental to the security of the nation. So for the sake of security reason, the, the way it is close to my house, I admire it. I love it. It, 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 will, it will give me some leverage. So please, can you give me your vineyard? And the Bible says, this young man will not. So Naboth says, in case you do not want to offer it, I will give you a better one. In other words, Naboth was demeaning so that which Naboth was having. Ahab was demeaning it. So Ahab said, I will give you a better one for it. Then he made an alternative offer. If it seems good to you, I will give you the, 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 the monetary equivalent. So the options were good. It was not a tight deal. It was a flexible deal. It was a considerate deal. It was a good deal. This is the we are talking about. The president of the nation, the first gentleman of the literally begging that you be given an opportunity to own a property. It reminds me, I read somewhere, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. The Bible says, Ahab needed the plot of this man by name, Naboth. Verse three, listen to it very quick, carefully. Listen to the response. So after the proposal, the Bible says in verse three of first Kings chapter 21, but Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. Check it quite carefully. Why a no to the sale proposal? There are some key stars. SKP did some work on this to us well in his book, Not For Sale. The vineyard of personal identity. Naboth said, I cannot give the vineyard to you. In that simple statement of Naboth is a pregnant statement for any man, for any woman who wants to be faithful in the time of the end. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid me, Mr. President, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. In other words, Naboth was saying, Mr. President, I cannot give you the vineyard. The vineyard cannot be given to you, Mr. President. The reason is that it represents my identity. How do we know? Just look at the following verses. First Kings chapter 21, verse 1. Verse 6, verse 7, verse 15. Since your theme is talking about uh, 
uh, faithful to the end and uh, maintaining or keeping an identity to the end of time. Watch the identity permutation. Look at the way the man was described. First Kings chapter 21 verse 1. And it came to pass after those things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard. So Naboth, he, there are a lot of Naboth in his days. The thing that distinguished Naboth was that Naboth, his identity is tied to the land. He is from Jezreel. Verse 6, he said to her, because I spoke to Naboth, the Jezreelite, that is his identity. Verse, verse 7, then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, you now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and, 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 and you'll have to be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. That is his identity. Verse 15, and it came to pass when Jezebel held that uh, Naboth had been stoned, uh, the Bible says, uh, and was there, that Jezebel said to Ahab, arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. That is identity. Naboth is not just refusing to sell. The vineyard represents his identity. Selling the vineyard means he is saying, I've lost my definition. The vineyard, if it is sold, Naboth will lose his location because there are many Naboth in the days of Naboth the Jezreelite. What distinguished Naboth was his location. The location was in Jezreel. The vineyard was in Jezreel. It was not just a simple baguette. The vineyard put meaning to him. It makes him different. It makes him a citizen. Without the vineyard, Naboth may be regarded a slave. Without the vineyard, Naboth will be looked upon as someone who is a foreigner, so to speak. If the vineyard is not present, Naboth cannot be an Israelite in the true sense of the word. In the vineyard, the identity of Naboth is found. The uniqueness, the vineyard represents the mark of Naboth's uniqueness. My brothers and sisters, it was not just a simple story. It reminds me of one of the quotes of Ellen Y. You see, the Seventh Day Adventist Church, about God's people, Ellen Y says, We have an identity. Today, your church and my identity crisis, identity of who we are, identity of what we stand used to be. In the past, when we sing in 213, lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Share our pilgrim. We believe we are a people. We are called with a message, with, with, with a timeline to herald a message to the world. But like Naboth, in the closing scene of earth history, there is an offer, an offer to compromise what it means to be Seventh-day Adventist. An offer to compromise what it is to be a Christian, like neighbor. There are offers around today, offers that sacrifice our distinct beliefs, offers that erode the foundation of our faith, offers that makes us look like one of the churches of the world. We are not just a church. We are a movement. We are a called out people, like neighbor. We have an identity. In our name, Seventh-day Adventists. The vineyard is the mark of uniqueness. Ellen White says, Seventh-day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people, separated from the world by the great cleaver of truth. He has cut them out from the query of the world and brought them into connection with himself. Not just that, watch very carefully, we are not just called out. We are not just a people. And this message is applicable to the Christian. You see, he has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of salvation, the greatest work of truth ever instructed to mortals. 
the most solemn and fearful warning ever sent by God to man has been committed to them to be given to the world. Will you not say an amen out there? Identity. In the call to sell Naboth's venia is the compromise of identity. Someone put it this way. I love it. Adam Wilton Tozer. He said, when the church loses its identity, this is the resultant. This is what the church becomes when it loses identity. I want to read it this way. It says, among others, the church has lost All right, here it goes. The church, she has no longer anything to say to the world. Her once robust shout of assurance has faded to an apologetic whisper. She who one time went out to declare now goes out to inquire. Not just that, watch it very carefully. Her dogmatic declaration has become a respectful suggestion, a word of relief with the understanding that it is after all only an opinion and not meant to sound by goated pure christianity instead of being shaped by its culture actually stands in to it somebody say an amen to that word so in the call for neighbor to sell his land the absence of the land create identity crisis for neighbor so neighbor says i will not sell our subject, faithful to the end, retaining identity in the time of the end. Point number two, Naboth refused to sell the vineyard because the vineyard is, is a representation of his identity. But the second point he gave was that the vineyard has or is a vineyard of ancestral heritage, so to speak. See the way it is put. First Kings chapter 21, Verse three, but Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. It was not a personal, it's not my personal property. The vineyard was for posterity. My ancestors, they gave it out to me. It was a family heritage. It was handed over by tradition to tradition to us. It cannot be sold. Mr. President, it cannot be compromised. I must be faithful to keeping this veneer. It was given to me by my ancestors. It is not just a veneer. It represents an ancestral trust. that believe in me. The forefathers know I can be someone who can take good care of it. They trusted me with this heritage, the property. It's an ancestral landmark. I cannot sell it. Unlike us today, who have been bequeathed an ancestral truth. Daniel chapter eight, verse 14, and unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Hey, we go to our church. We go to the world and we want the very landmark that gave us identity. That makes a Christian from the world. That makes the remnant unique in its mission. Today, we are trading it in exchange of a better Arab's garden or a better Arab's dollar or kwacha, or CD, or whatever money you spend. It is an ancestral landmark. And the neighbor says, I cannot sell it, Mr. President. It is not mine. I am just a caretaker. I must be faithful to the fathers. It is not my property. It is an ancestral landmark. At this time, I want to ask you, have you compromised an ancestral landmark? Have you compromised an ancestral landmark of faith, an ancestral landmark of honesty, an ancestral landmark of purity, an ancestral landmark of genuity, an ancestral landmark of music, 
an ancestral landmark of theology and hermeneutics. Today, within our wrong, a lot of hermeneutical and a lot of uh, exegetical approach has done on the church. The landmark of the church is being compromised. Like neighbors, many men and women are not willing to be faithful to that which has been bequeathed to them. When the pioneers of our church, through prayer and the studying of the word, and direction from the spirit of prophecy came to a deeper understanding of some teachings that are unique to us. Today, they are being traded for Arab's garden, for Arab's money, and ancestral landmarks have been given to the dogs. We are dealing with faithful to the end, retaining identity in the time of the end. The vineyard was a vineyard of spiritual fidelity. It was not just a vineyard of identity. It was not just a vineyard, uh, so to speak, of, 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 of heritage or ancestral heritage. It was a vineyard of neighbor spiritual fidelity or his commitment, his faithfulness to his faith and to his God. Look at the way the Bible puts it. What did he say? But neighbor said to Ahab, the Lord forbid, I like that. The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. He never said, I don't feel like selling it to you. He said, Mr. President, there is a divine injunction on me. There is a divine intersupposition on me. I am, I, I am left. I no option. I am bounded by law. I am bounded by covenant. I am bounded by God's will not to part with this property. The Lord forbids. Where did he get this from? It's critical to go to the book of Numbers. You go to Numbers chapter 36. You go to verse number seven. The Bible says, and I read, Numbers, Numbers chapter 36 verse seven. To verse 9. So the inheritance of the children of Israel, this is God speaking. Not take hands from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. The inheritance of the children of Israel shall not change hands from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep the inheritance of the tribe of Israel. Shall be the wife of one of the family of the father's tribe. Clear. Then God reach rate. Thus, no inheritance shall change her from one tribe to another. But every tribe of the children of Israel shall the case. There was a divine order that not sell a property. This was where Nabob was. Somewhere else, you read Leviticus chapter 25, from verse 30 to verse 38. I want to focus on just verse 23 and verse 25. Look at it very carefully. The land shall not be sold permanently. Listen to who is speaking. The land shall not be sold permanently. For the land is mine. God. He said the land shall not be sold permanently. For the land is mine. In other words, Then it goes on. In verse 23, is a pregnant statement. Property. I've bequeathed my interest to you, but the rules of engagement is this. The land shall not be sold because it is not yours. It is mine. And then point number two, you are strangers. Yeah. 
belongs to me. I declare. In fact, I am under divine obligation. I cannot sell the land. I cannot sell the land because God, God demands me not to sell the land. Idiot. Thou is disobedient. The land shall not be sold. Point number two, why will he not be willing to sell the land? He said to sell the land is unfaithfulness. I can't because you see, whosoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Be trustworthy in handling worldly riches, the riches of the kingdom. Neighbor for saying, Mr. President, I am a surgeon. We are pilgrims in this land. God is the owner of the property. My fidelity is not to the authorities of the land. My fidelity is not to the rulers of the nation. My fidelity is not to the kings of the world. Mr. President, respect as an act of unfaithfulness. I must be faithful to my God. See, I love God enough, Mr. President, a relationship and a covenant with this God. I cannot sell the land. Selling the land is unfaithfulness. Selling the land is selling the land is, is, is an abuse of trust. Selling the land is a betrayal of the God who gives me life. In him I live move I can't but the Lord, but, but he said, the Lord forbids that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about being faithful to the end of time. Let me run quick. The fourth reason is the idea of the principle. Watch it very carefully. Look at verse number two, when the king made the offer. So Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is very near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. This is the offer. For which neighbor is saying, the Lord has forbidden that I should not sell. Permit me make a little digression. Could it be today? We have seen God's revealed will very clearly. We sold out. We have sold out when we are in the university and it is time for exam and it is on the Sabbath and the Bible says, thou shalt do no other work. And yet still, we go out to write exam on the Sabbath. We have sold the vineyard. We have sold the vineyard. When God says, this should not be done, a tithe should be returned, faithful, and we return some other thing which is not a tithe. We have sold the vineyard. There is a sellout, my brothers. When a young man and a young woman engage in that which the Lord is displeased with, that is a sell out. It contravenes what is explicitly written. God says, thou shall have no other gods before me. Thou shall not bow down to them. Thou shall not call the name of the Lord in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He says, honor your parents. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear fault with them. Thou shall not covet your neighbor's property. It is explicitly written. When we are engaged with treaties in these last days, may we become neighbors. Impact Zambia. Be the next generation of neighbors. Refuse to sell out. Keep to the principle. It reminds me of a wise statement. It's the want of man. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost soul are true and honest. Men who will stand for the right door the heavens for. This is neighbor. 
The church is in need of labor. When the leaders of the world are trying to massage us with tax, with, 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 with money, so that we can soften our stand, they say, give me your doctrine, give me your theology, let me give you another worship style. We will say, the Lord has sanctioned me, we will not do it. When our vegetables, vegetables, have been used to replace our, our vineyard like neighbor, we will say no. If further reasons are given, we will declare Ahab offered different perspective to the bargain, but the man neighbor was where he was since the discussion started. The Lord forbid. His principle got its antecedent from God's word. It reminds me when Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 says, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. To overcome the allurement in the last days, to be faithful to God, our only show, our only uh, uh, protector, our only pavilion, our only rock is in the B I B L E. Will you not say an amen? I, I, I like the man neighbor. The Lord forbids that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. It reminds me of the world visions. The world visions, these are people who stand for truth. Who will be honest? Who will not sell out? Who will not abandon? Who will not disappoint the Lord? Like the Waldicians, when the allurement of the world is soaking us to go along by getting along. Listen to what it said of them. The historical records, I'm quoting the book, Selected Messages, Book 2, page 231, page 235. Ellen White says, and I quote, they talking about the world. of the world Uh, sorry, remember we lost pastor because of uh, the internet connection. I uh, welcome our singers as he joins back. And um, let's have the patience and let's be faithful unto the end as uh, he joins back. There is a technological hitch on his end from Ghana, so uh, he sh should be joining us in a short while. As the team uh, prepares to share with us the, with a song of uh, praising our God, uh, allow me to uh, pray. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, let me pray then. Uh, we'll pray the music as Pastor tries to rejoin to back to the platform. Let's bow down as we pray. Our living Master, we come before you. We thank you for indeed it's by your might power that you took through the world dances and the spirit father that you imbued on uh, Naboth as 
he was faithful, Father, to keeping the inheritance. It is our prayer, Father, indeed. We shall keep the inheritance that you've given us, the landmarks, the uniqueness of the message that we present unto the world. Now, Father, we had a technical challenge on connectivity. May you come through for us, Father. May you give us the ensure endurance, Father, to continue holding on, Father, as we receive this message that you presented unto our Pastor God's Queen, TK Mensa, Father. As we sing praises unto you, may your glory and honor be seen. We pray. All this, believe and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Welcome, and uh, we are aware of the challenge and proceed. You are mute. Ah, okay, thank you. We're talking about the world visions. Sorry about the technical. Is God forbids that I should be a part of my food and be making the food. this is the kind of thought process like what Jesus did. The best when the authority was stemmed from a God is authority from the word of God. Then I'm saying that this was the way the world vision. This way. The book select is 200 and what says. The world is the school of the world as the men not no attention to anyone, but they leave Sorry, Pastor, for the challenge. You can proceed. Don't mute again. So, dear members, as Pastor presents, we can uh, be bringing with him for this challenge to not disrupt the flow of the message. Yeah, proceed, Pastor. Regardless, the internet, this message will go. Yeah. Just be whispering the prayer. This is the case and this is the point. If you watch today, we are not faithful because we are not faithful to the word. This, this is the basic point. Naboth faithful. The Waldicians never sacrificed their principle. They went all way. Minority. They did what was expected of them to do. The topic and retaining the time of the end. Now, just watch, and I want you to answer this question. You see, when was the offer made to that was made to Naboth? Just pray out to a light translation. Take note of that. We are talking about the time of the end. Naboth, it was not long after this event. In other words, this event is a prototype. It was 
of that which will happen in the last days. Look the way it happened. Be in. Make no mistake about it. We neighbor integrity. Neighbor was us. Sell your principle. Just for then, then before the coming of Jesus, before the chariots will come, before the closing work of earth history, there will be a call on every one of us, regardless of our status, regardless of our identity, regardless of our background. You will be called to sell your identity. Among the youth of our church, there is a to be like just one people, a out of our integrity, a sell out of principle, ladies and gentlemen. So Ahab went into the house when he refused to sell out to him. He became mad. He went to tell the world he was not correct. What was the issue? A man refused to sell out his identity. So the king is mad. May I hasten to add, before the coming of Jesus, when we are asked to bargain our integrity, our faith, our identity, when we refuse the rulers of the world, they will be angry because we refuse to compromise our identity identity, our heritage, our faith. But he man said to him, why is your spirit so sweet? He demonstrated his stand. He was not someone who was We don't want to we want, we want to want to step on toes. We can't. We can't be faithful if we cannot confront error. We can't be faithful. For now, no, no. The Lord has forbidden me. He took a stand. Somebody say an amen to that one. May you take a stand in this last days. May you have a position in this last days. All the issues dividing the church, issues from women ordination, issues from, uh, from, from health reform, issues on our, our, our interpretation of our prophetic timeline. Every Amen. You can't be asking, Lord, I want to be faithful, and you are neutral. There is no neutrality in this. My brothers and sisters, impact must have a stand. He's coming to an end. God is calling today. He is asking today, take a stand. Make a stand. You cannot stay on the wall. You need to let us know. He will not. You see, in, in Ahab's response, when the wife asked him, he quoted Naboth, but he did not quote Naboth in full. He just said he refused to sell. The spiritual leader refused and, and, and the civic leader of Israel refused to tell all the truth. Nebuchadnezzar did not just refuse to sell. He refused to Then Jezebel told him, you exercise authority over Israel. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name and elders and nobles and the leaders were called look at Jezebel. Now sending a, a, a presidential fiat one of these days. 
there will be a presidential fiat. We have seen it in the past. Uh, in something signed a fiat. It led to the death of God's people. A fiat will be sent out again. The modern Jezebel representing false religion, representing states of the world, the clouds will again send a fiat. She wrote in the letters, use a religious approach to deal with to deal with a social issue. The covetousness of the king should be concealed. We are going to be deceived. You do the seven day Adventists to join you. We want to this, ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake. There is an ecumenical dialogue. Look at what has happened in verse nine. She wrote in the letter saying, proclaim a fast and sit neighbor with high honor among the people. So they call the seven day Adventists. Now we want you, the Adventists, to become ABCD and leadership and membership. Feels that we have been honored. So the Bible says in verse 9, what has happened in the days of Ahab? We have seen in the 10th century. We have seen when men and women were, they, they were literally hunted. We have seen, and the Bible says, six two men, this is Jezebel's approach. These honest persons, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, you have blasphemed God and the king. So the issue will be settled between religion and within politics. And it happened in the days of Agab and Nabal. Then take him out and stone him that he may die. And so the men of his city, the elders and the nobles, who were inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel, it was written in the letters which they have sent. The man was killed. A fast was proclaimed. They, they plotted him out. It, look, they picked him out. Faithfulness to his God, to his heritage, because to his neighbor was and he died. It reminds me of the Apostle Paul. Because of his fidelity, because of his faithfulness, he died. When we are talking about faithfulness to the, uh, to the end, it's a call that we want and we are ready to faithfulness to the cause reminds me of John the Baptist when he is had It's God's people who will die on account of their faith. It tells me during To Ahab, arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth. Yeah, sorry, Pastor. You can proceed. It keeps breaking before you were disconnected, but 
we thank God you back again. We will uh, keep faithful till uh, the message is delivered. Yeah, proceed. We will keep you still in prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor, for the powerful message. I can see your video is uh, frozen from my end. Hello. Yes, Pastor, you able yeah. to hear me? Okay, some. Uh, Technicalities here, but uh, still uh, can see is a uh, good, good. Uh, thank you, thank you, Pastor. You proceed, proceed. We'll keep you in prayer still as you continue for strength, especially amid this technological hiccup. Yeah, proceed. Thank you. Again, I can see this connection is uh, a bit frozen. Uh, Brother Dean Chola, you can uh, pray with us once again. Brother Dean? Yes, my brother, I can get you. So okay. uh, is it the prayer offered for uh, the network to be fine or to close, which one? Yeah, it's, it's the network <laughs> so that uh, we, because he didn't uh, it kept uh, staggering and uh, sure. his screen currently is frozen yeah so for the network so that he can uh, sure um, shall we pray yeah our heavenly father in the name of jesus we come to your throne lord a message uh, is being delivered and we receive this trouble with the network we do pray lord that you may connect us to the network of heaven which is never fading please uh, work through the outworking of the holy angels and the holy spirit that there may be no disturbance that we may get a word of salvation in jesus mighty name we do pray amen amen Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Dean. Uh, oh, Pastor, are you able to get back? I can see you right Yeah, Thank you. Proceed. As we wrap up. Yes. Let's go back to sleep tonight with a question. Are we faithful like Naboth? Are we faithful to our integrity? Are we faithful? Are we faithful to our faith? And are we faithful to our, with our loyalty? It is my prayer that God will bless us. The graves of, the, the grave of Naboth is calling and asking this generation Simply, even in these last days, be faithful in the home, be faithful at the workplace. That rose as art, like neighbors. Uh, thank you, thank you, Pastor. I lost you again. I don't know if it's my network. But if I got clearly, the message in wrapping up uh, today's session was 
we examine ourselves and the question was are we faithful to the landmarks that god has given unto us and it's a great call for us to be faithful unto the end thank you pastor for the wonderful message despite the hiccups with technology the message has come home that indeed it is a moment that we should be faithful unto the end amen 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 so allow me at this time to again draw attention to some uh, communications from uh, uh, communication desk before we have our final prayer from uh, brother dean uh, first uh, is to bring to attention that indeed uh, with this timely message as from tomorrow we'll be having a next speaker who is a pastor Masipuko. Pastor Delo Masipuko will be speaking on the team ready for his appearing. We've learned of the message of being faithful until the end. Now, tomorrow we'll be having on day 25 uh, ready for his appearing. The question has been as we've been moving from day unto day. What have we learned? But tomorrow we'll be having a preparation that indeed we should be ready for his appearing. At this moment also, let's keep praying for our speakers for good health and for tomorrow's session for uh, a strong internet connectivity, both for our speakers and the participants who shall be grazing uh, this occasion. So also to bring to our attention is re-emphasize that uh, our programs are live on both pl platforms that is a live kenya page and impact zambia we can be able to look up and have the messages and um for those who never joined or joining today for the first time you can be able to reach those uh, live streamed videos and uh, be able to get the blessings that uh, will come upon us. So Pastor, once again, we say thank you. Thank you so much. For thank the you wonderful for the privilege. Yeah, Sorry for yeah, we, yeah, for the challenges, we understand. And it's been a great blessing to have you on board. And uh, indeed, God has used you. May he continue to serve you. And blessings unto your family and friends uh, in uh, Ghana. As you continue serving the Lord, we'll keep praying for you for greater strength in this uh, vineyard. Amen. So uh, at this moment, I'd like to welcome Brother Dean to close us with a word of prayer so that we can sure. close our program. And uh, before he shares, maybe I may have forgotten it, um, Brother Newton and uh, the Impact Zambia team will share with your platforms uh, the fairness of affliction that we, should be, uh, we will be having as uh, Alive Kenya this coming Sabbath at 4 p.m., which should be 5 p.m. Zambia time, uh, but Kenyan time it's 4 p.m. to 6. So you welcome aboard as uh, Pastor David Othiambo, Sister Dando, and uh, Brother Evangelist Saya will be guiding us and presenting the messages before us. Thank you all, and God be with you as uh, Brother Dean prays with us. Shall we pray? We are thankful again, our Heavenly Father, for giving your servant words from on high. We are thankful, Lord, for the fresh bread that has come from the sanctuary above. We also, Lord, do want to remember the days that we are living in. Lord, do prepare us as a people. Remind us, Lord, of our heritage that has been handed down unto us. Help us, Lord, to stand for the truth, to represent you. Lord, I'm thankful for co-hosting me into this program, speaking of uh, high words of honor about Jesus Christ. May you bless your man's servant. Give him the tongue, Lord, of the learned, and also give us tongues of the learned that we may utter Jesus in a presentable way to the world. Bless us, Lord. Uh, figure so much with the Holy Spirit and the presence of the holy angels. 
In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. We're happy to have you on board. Pastor, once again, God be with you as you continue serving me in the ministry. And uh, blessings unto all. Let's be faithful unto the end. Amen. 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 I welcome uh, uh, the music team to grace as we will be joining maybe to have a rest into the night. For the rest of uh, attendees from the various parts of the country, let's meet again tomorrow, same hour, for the final message uh, that will be presented before us. God be with you all. Uh, Pastor Menza, blessings unto you and uh, greet your family and receive our greetings from Imbak, Zambia. All right, I will share with them. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Uh, bye. Masters appearing, yet signs all foretell that that moment is nearing, that he shall return is a promise most cheering. But we know not the hour. There's light. Seeking salvation, there's truth in the book, in the book of the Lord's revelation, each prophecy points to a great consummation, but we know Let us walk.